You don't need any help, huh? She doesn't want any help. Nope. It was their first time to fly as a family during this pandemic. Okay, we've arrived in Cebu. This is my first time off the main islands of uh, in the Philippines, so it's my second island. And it was my first time to ride a plane without wearing diapers. We flew to Cebu for two very important missions. Hi Miriam! Do you know where we're going? Where are we going? To Bohol. Bohol. <laughs> yeah, but first work, then pray, then play. So work. What is our work right now? What do we have to do? Mm. We have to get your passport. Passport. Yeah. <laughs> and they're gonna ask you questions, huh? What are they gonna ask you? What's your name, Miriam? Miriam. Where do you live? In Los Baños. Yeah. Do you know the province? La. La. Guna. Laguna. Very good. Hello. Hi. So we're here at the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe, just outside of Cebu City. It's in the mountainous, uh, what would you call it, foothills, I guess, yeah. as you go up into the mountains. This is where this miraculous image of Our Lady of Guadalupe appeared. And it's been centuries now, and we heard about this and quite a while ago. We always wanted to come and explore it and do a little intriguing documentary type of thing on it because it seems to have a fascinating history behind it. So here we are, this is our first time here. We just got here, and we're gonna show you around. And just as a tip, don't be like me. Observe proper church attire, because <laughs> there are sensibilities here in the, in the province. So yes, we shouldn't come here wearing very revealing clothing. So we have to be Shorts. Observing their their rules. See? Unfortunately, I came in shorts. <laughs> so oh, don't be like me. Well, I have uh, oh, I have bags yeah. full of clothes. So we actually came here. We came here as pilgrims, as you can see. You know, yes. we're not like tourists here. Yes. This is like a spiritual journey for us. So yes. We even have our pilgrimage around. pilgrimage uh, shirts. I love my mama. That's my mama. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So we have here the church that was built for the faithful in the surrounding area and for those pilgrims that still come. Although I think this was much more active in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s. But as you can see, there's the altar where they still celebrate the mass, I think on weekends. But as you can see, this modern part of the church was built, built right into the cave. So this is the original cave. As you can see, it's very beautiful. And Miriam is very eager, aren't you Miriam? Get into the cave. <laughs> this is Miriam's first cave. So that's good, huh? So, this is the entrance for us. Of course, tall people problems. <laughs> but we're gonna head in there. Whoop. I'm watching my head. Wow. So, it, it's lit by natural and artificial light. I didn't realize there was a pilgrim in here. But, uh, I'll tell you more if this person leaves soon. Wow, this is very beautiful. This is very striking. in here when you walk in. It's a very beautiful place. spring that comes out on the side of the rocks and it's always flowing and they transfer it into this jug so that people may use it to bless their bodies and call on Our Lady of Guadalupe's intercession for any healings that they may need physical or spiritual ailments you can see it dripping times that they may 
may be akin to Our Lady's tears. And she's shedding for the state of the world. So as I'm here at this shrine, I'm in one of this beautiful cave. I'm reminded by my first injury and love that I had for Ardeni Guadalupe. Dating back several years now, she played a big part in my reversion back to the Catholic faith. I'm forever grateful and indebted to her, to our Lord. And I'm really touched by the fact that this, this isn't a modern metropolis. I mean, it's booming out there. You probably hear on some of our footage, there's roosters, which is kind of weird for a metropolis. <laughs> but like I would say we're at the foothills, like the metropolis goes to the mountain. It's Cebu City. I'd say Cebu City has at least a million people, so it's a major modern metropolis. And it goes to this mountain. And I'd say it starts from this mountain to the other side, it goes into the provincial areas. So you usually have your roosters and stuff like that. So traffic is booming outside, there's children running, playing around. You would, you would think that modern society barely even notices this place anymore. That's what I thought. But since we've been here, we've already seen sets of pilgrims come in. A young man with, I don't know if they were two of his very young nephews or his children, and perhaps. There's a woman that meticulously cleans this place probably every day of her life. And what strikes me is this is a devotion that started hundreds of years ago from this image that was found in this cave by a man who was chasing a chicken. <laughs> you see the chicken there? Yeah. <laughs> so after they brought the image of Our Lady out of the cave, they brought her, this is in the early 1900s now, they brought her into a, an established parish. So the Catholic Church was already well established here by the 1900s, early 1900s. But her image and her devotion goes back. And we're trying to trace this back historically, see how far back we can go. And we think it could be early 1600s, it could be late, late 1500s, which when you think about that, the world in the 1500s compared to the world now, I mean, the world now, you could get on a plane and go to Mexico from here and you know, you'd be there within 24 hours. Back then, you'd have to get on a boat. If you even knew where Mexico was or had ever heard of Mexico, you'd have to get on a boat and travel, I don't know how many days to get there. But yet, somehow, this devotion of our lady of Guadalupe came all the way from Mexico to the Philippines. But just think of it, there was no modern technology back then, there was no internet, you know, there was no social media. Just think how powerful our Lord is and His Church, how powerful the body of Christ must have been back then already to be able to stretch from Mexico to the Philippines, literally the other side of the globe. I don't think you could get too much further, you know, in proximity from Mexico to the Philippines. It only took her decades to get to the other side of the world, into the people's hearts. And it's absolutely fascinating because now, nowadays we have all this modern technology and we don't have that much faith in our hearts to be able to perceive things like that. And, uh, but yeah, somehow it happened. And it's unfolding. It's still happening, as I said. And ever since then, the Catholic Church took root in this beautiful country. It's the only country in the East that has that uh, historical root of the Catholic Church and that really incorporated the Catholic Church into it. In 2002, Cardinal Vidal proclaimed Our Lady of Guadalupe as the patroness of the Archdiocese of Cebu, a hundred years after miraculous cures were attributed to her in the session that saved lives during the cholera outbreak of 1902. So, it's an ongoing mystery that's un being unveiled, it's being revealed. You know, it's not something that just happened 500 years ago where she appeared to Juan Diego on the other side of the world in Mexico on a mountainside. We're here 500 years later and we're still living the mystery. The mystery is unfolding. Our, lady, our Lady's devotion is growing in the Philippines. Our Lady of Guadalupe of all things. In 2006, she was canonically crowned and given the title of Our Lady of Guadalupe de Cebu to differentiate her from Our Lady of Guadalupe de Extremadura, Somera, and Mexico. It's just amazing. There's a story to, to be told with this, and we're going to hope to tell that story, even though right now is a quick visit for us, but like I said, just as the story is unfolding, so will our story of this story unfold. So we're here, we're trying to be prayerful, and we have our mask on the altar. <laughs> we ask the Lord to take care of this whole wretched pandemic. We ask our Lady Guadalupe to intercede for us. 
to intercede for the people of the Philippines, especially during this new time of the elections that were just held. We pray for our own family members, and we pray for the health of the world, both physically and spiritually. So, as we go back out to the world, I'll put my mask back on, but I'll have the faith in my heart that this is all going to be taken care of. And we put ourselves under the patronage of our lady Guadalupe. We hope to be able to tell her story more and more. And this is a huge part of it for us. Just being in this cave, you know, that's been here for only God knows how long. We'll continue our journey on today, you know, with a five-year-old. Doing documentaries can be a challenging thing sometimes. Juan <laughs> Diego. He's the one that saw her name Guadalupe. So here we have Juan Diego. He's obviously the one that saw the apparition of Our Lady Guadalupe. So it's appropriate to see him here also, right at the entrance. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Prayer for physical healing. Lord, we come before you trusting in your mercy and love. We come before you with faith in your promise. To this day, the mystery lives on. Who carved her image on Malave wood? How long ago? Who put her in this cave? When and why? Our quest for answers has just begun. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen.